Historical Museum and founded by the German Federal Cultural Foundation and the Cultural Foundation of the German Lender. It's a great honor for me to welcome you up on stage, Birgit Busold. You are going to present to us <laughs> Homosexualities, How Do Queer Interventions Work? Representing queer culture in non-queer spaces. I'm very excited. Thank you so much for yeah. coming here. <laughs> Is it good enough? So, can you hear me? No? Better now? Okay. Yeah, um, good morning and thank you for the kind introduction and thank you for the invitation. Um, as I have only 20 minutes, I would like to um, invite you for a short guided tour through the exhibition. And it will be a very like quick and dirty one because as the show has like more than 1600 square meters and nearly 1000 objects, we have to hurry. <laughs> okay, this is the poster and this is the first uh, impression like a uh, artwork from Elmgren and Traxet before in uh, before the entrance of um German um historical museum M maybe you know that one and this is the plan there are two uh, two floors uh, in the Deutsches Historisches Museum and the German National Museum and this is the plan for the first one and here you can see the first impression when you come in and this is like the first section. You can see some strange objects and um, we call that section um, the first time and it refers to the coming out. We, we um, organized an open call in November last year asking people to come to Schules Museum and to bring us um, an object which, which has to do with their coming out and to tell, tell the story tell the story and so here you can yeah there are some icons like um, icons of the gay and lesbian culture or the queer culture um, as you may know like uh, Patricia Highsmith, uh, Highsmith and also Marlene Dietrich some quotes and here are the no this is wrong sorry and here you can see like the, um, the little um, screens where, c where you can listen to more than 40 people who um, yeah who tell their stories and they are really really different like the very classical one my father kicked me out up to uh, stories like coming out what coming out and the next uh, section it's um, sh uh, like a sort of gallery um, as you may know, um, here you can see um, the very sa famous painting of um, Tamara Lempitska, uh, Susi Solidor. And this uh, gallery tries to find traces of queer culture in art history. Because, um, yeah. And this is also the focus of the next section. We, we show um, one of our really most important collections we have in the Schulz Museum. Um, we have, maybe uh, to, to tell you, we have a really very huge archive, um, like more than 600 square meters and more than 1,000 like, meters of material. And it includes art, but also documents and everything. And this collection is the so-called Collection Sternweiler, and Andreas Sternweiler is one of the founder of the museum and he started in the beginning of the 80s to collect something what I would call like a visual archive of homoerotic culture. And, in, in, and it includes uh, like uh, picture like some 
Mayo can read it? No. Um, it includes, like, uh, for sure, the Creek, uh, like the Creek culture, but also um, bodybuilding, uh, a, lot, a huge collection of bodybuilding photographs from the 50s or 60s, but also um, um, material about uh, transgender performance uh, in the 20s in Berlin and um, uh, also like um, uh, photographs of pri uh, private photographs of male couples also beginning of the century till 50s till to the 50s so this is the next um, the next section the next section um, is maybe like the, the first historical one and it tries to make audible the sound of the queer movement of this especially of the 70s and 80s. Um, we didn't focus or we didn't put the focus of the show on the famous 20s, the Roaring 20s, because it's, it's well, more or less well known and we think it's more myth than reality in a way. And um, we also think that, uh, that uh, like the present uh, situation of equality, more or less equality in Germany, has more to do with the 70s, with the activism of the 70s and 80s than with the 20s. And this A to Z um, uh, um <coughs> uh, yeah, narrative, like mm, it's not a chronologi chronological narrative, it's A to Z, refers to the, <coughs> refers to the um, structure of archive and not to the structure of nar historical narrative. And um, it refers all to all, also the architecture, like the design of that refers to, to the architecture of archiving and maybe also a little bit of prison for sure. And here you can, maybe it's a very good example to show how it works. Um, on the right hand side you can see uh, like a, a toy, a teddy, and you, you know that the Teddy Award is one of the most important um, awards for queer cinema in like in in the um, uh, in in the Berlinale, and this little Teddy was the first one who the first Teddy Award uh, who was uh, given in eighty seven to um, Almodovar, and it shows a little bit the do it yourself um, how to say the the do it yourself aesthetics, but also the do it it yourself policies of queer movements uh, in the 80s and 70s. It shows that people decide, hey, we want to have this award and then let's do it. And it's part of our archive, we have it in our archive. And on the left hand side you can see another, um, like, an, another um, part of the queer history. It's, um, it's called Tit Dominance. And um, it's in honor to a very important activist within the um, sex positive movement in, in Germany, Christa Weinstein, who is a photographer and performer, and she is one of the grand dames of the sex positive movement in, in Germany. And the photos are from, I think, 88 or 87. So then let's go on the second floor. Um, it, we we talked a lot how to uh, how to make yeah how to st structure the show, and as I said, we decided against the chronological version, um, and so in the first floor in like the the archive you can learn something about the movement the people who 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 tr yeah who forced. Um, and who um, ma made sure that the situation became uh, um, different. And in the second floor, we we talk about maybe the two most important opponents of this movement. Um, it's the court, like the, the legal situation, the laws, and it's the um, science, like medicine, psychology, um, medical, uh, no, sexual science. And we start, um, but we start with like a more, um, um, how to say, a more personal thing. Um, this is the audio installation. 
and you can listen to um, homophobic, to hate speech quotes um, by uh, stars and uh, sports stars and pop stars and church people and politicians, of, of course, talk master, etc. And um, yeah, I think it's very important that people who do not know what we talk about know that like this homophobic uh, policies are not something which is long, long, long ago, but it's like today, it's present, it's recent. And most of or all of these quotes are from like 2012, 2013, 2015. And people are shocked about it sometimes. So then let's go in and the, this is the, the, the before the court. Uh, is, it is, is the section called, and you can see this architecture, which reminds a little bit um, to the court architecture, but also to the um, the, uh, the first German uh, uh, parliament of the Federal Republic in Bonn. Um, it has like this sort of um, aesthetics, and you can um, you can learn about the um, uh, development of the legal situation in, in Germany. And we we try to open the perspective to an international perspective because LGBTIQ uh, human rights are now something which ha has to have an international uh, perspective. And one of the main messages of these big maps where we show the, the uh, situations in the different countries um, is that we, we try to make clear that the homophobic policies um, which came up um, in the former colonies are nothing more than the toxic leg legacies of the former conquerors, of our own culture. It comes back in a way. So some more impressions of this section. Um, yeah, maybe I, I tell a little bit. This is um, an, an artwork uh, of Heather Cassils, the artist who also did our poster image. And um, yeah, it's a very open uh, piece. It's a result of a performance where Heather Cassils attack a block of clay. And this is like the results of that. And we, we thought, or we think that this like it, it talks about violence and forming and performing, and it talks about um, body and uh, how, how what is body and and material material and etc. Et and we thought that this very very open um, piece, um, yeah, bring in like a broad meaning in all the in all the show. It's in the mid of the, uh, it's in the center of the of the whole show. So this is um, a special space we curated. Um, it's a space of remembrance to the um, uh, victims of the Nazis. We, um, it's a very personal way and tries to uh, to make possible like a personal view on this. And w and we we show six or we um, uh, there are six different biographies. Um, uh, for men and two women. So the last, um, or some of the last sections in the Deutsches Historisches Museum is the um, this, the section in the Matrix, and it it talks about the inf like the dis discourses within the scientific, scientific communities, like uh, psychology and medicine, and also the or the humanities in general. Here you can see uh, Magnus Hirschfeld. Maybe you know him. So, and this is like the good, yeah, maybe l more fun space to say goodbye to the visitors and to bring them to the Schules Museum, where the second part of the show take place takes place. Here's Schules Museum. Um, the Schules Museum. It was very difficult to find a structure. Um, uh, to put one exhibition in two spaces, and we, yeah, it was really difficult. And we, um, like the issue of the show in Schulz Museum, is not uh, again like an historical discourse. It's, it's more to question the present and also to question the future. And we did it with, um, 
yeah, more or less um, uh, curating an art show. And um, this this uh, show um, doesn't deal again with homosexuality, basically. It deals more with the gender order. It asks, yes, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, I, I only will introduce some of the artists. This is uh, Monica Bonvicini, uh, Satisfy Me. Here you can see um, Andy Warhol, uh, Mario Banana and Blowjob, um, Sam Taylor Johnson, Prontosaurus, um, here's the image of the first room, which has a little bit like uh, the architecture of a, of a club. In the back, you can't see it, it's a compilation of queer porn. Um, and one of the directors is Swedish, Marit Östberg, maybe some, some of you will know her. So this is Mary Coble Kings, again Mary Coble. Uh, Stefan Thiel. Um, Black Facebook is the name of the work. Um, so this is a really very nice work uh, by uh, Katharina Kusura, Men's Bath. Once again, Elm Klein and Traxet, um, Boy Scout. You can see it again. Uh, is the Fleckner Consolations, and this is um, my favorite work in Schulz Museum. It's um, the Google Trans uh, platform from um, uh, Ellen Störtewand. You may know her. She's a very uh, interesting artist. So, the last section um, is again. Um, uh, like a video installation, and we did uh, interviews with uh, queer activists in in Berlin, talking with them like one hour, and then we put it together to to organize like or to show like the discourse of the queer community today in Berlin. So this is the last piece. Um, Julian Rosefeld, uh, Deep Gold uh, film. And uh, it's a great film because he uh, recalls again the myth of the Roaring Twenties and uh, yeah, bring in like new queer perspectives in, this, in that uh, mythology. So, if you, I can show some um, images of the catalog, but I, I think I do not have any time, right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Birgit, for bringing us all the way to Berlin and, and to the exhibition. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to open the floor for questions, but I'm going to take the opportunity to ask one question for, to begin with. Um, I think it's very interesting, this big exhibition project exhibition divided into two different yeah. museums yeah. and a cooperation between the Schwulis Museum which is focused and specialized on LGBT perspectives yeah. cooperating with a mainstream museum, the German Historical Museum. Yeah. Uh, I'm so curious, what were the beneficial beneficiary parts of working with the mainstream museum and what were, what were the challenging parts? Uh, the beneficial um, parts were uh, for sure that we can reach like a broader audience because there is uh, Schulz Museum is like a community museum and like uh, the mainstream people do have problems to come in in a way and so the show goes to the mainstream and uh, is open for the mainstream and this was for us the most important and the challenges <laughs> um, it was in a way very simple because um, uh, we didn't have any discussions about the, uh, the, the concept. Uh, this was for me very surprising. Um, we, we did like the, 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 cur uh, the curatorial concept is yeah, completely done by the team, which was part of the Schwules Museum. And so there was no discussion with the, um, uh, with the um, uh, Deutsches Historisches Museum. The only discussion we had was uh, was about a poster. They didn't want it first, <laughs> and we had to like to uh, convince them. But 
it worked. And it, the challenging part um, was more about the administration because it's a really big house. They have a lot of people working there and we are a really very, very small team. And to, to deal with this uh, big, big administration structure, it was like the hell. <laughs> this was the most important, uh, for me or for us, it was the most difficult part. Sounds like a process of many learnings. Would yeah. you do it again? Yeah, uh, yes, I would do it again. Yeah, and we will do it again because the show will, will travel. Oh, nice. uh, next year we will have another show in Münster. Münster is a very small city in the west of Germany and um, very Catholic, very conservative, uh, smaller city, uh, like 200,000 or 300,000 uh, inhabitants. So it's a, com yeah, it's a yeah, completely different uh, surrounding. And, um, but but it's in, a, in a way, it's al also very uh, funny because M Münster, this very little town, was one of the most important cities uh, for the first, uh, like the 70s movement. They had really important people there and groups and everything. And the first demonstration of homosexual people, um, which happened in Germany, in Western Germany, was in, was in 72 in Münster. Ah. <laughs> so... Interesting great. setting. Yeah, very interesting nice. setting. Yeah. I hope someone invites the exhibition to come to Sweden as well. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Do we have questions? Could somebody? Yeah, Annika will give you the microphone. Yes, please. This is Emil, by the way. So, hi. Um, hi. My name is Emil. I'm working at uh, uh, Linköping University. I have a question about separatism and assimilation. Um, when you work with a mainstream museum like yeah. this, and with Swoles Museum, is there a... Um, <sighs> what would the mainstream museum say about erotic art? Did, did, did they have um, thoughts about it? They didn't want too, too much camp? at the museum or did they have any um, inventions about them? Um no. Uh, this was for me also... Are you finished? Yeah. Yeah. This was really surprising for us that there were no discussions about... Uh, we, we, we could do whatever we want. It was really uh, uh, surprising for us. There were, like, we have <coughs> some... <coughs> sorry. There was one uh, discussion about um, explicit erotic art. Uh, it, it's part of the uh, collection of Sternweiler, which I showed. And um, these were two very old um, pornographic uh, series. Um, and uh, we had to, yeah, you had to kick it out. Uh, because, but not because of it. It's because of it's not allowed to show pornographic material to younger people, to like <coughs> students or if you are younger than than 18. It's not allowed. It's not like the the specific policy of Deutsches Historisches Museum. It's generally like you 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 aren't allowed. And this was like the the only dis discussion we had. But it was not about. Yeah, it was like about the, the legal situation. And uh, yeah, it was no problem in a way. <laughs> I was, we, were, we were really surprised. Great. Thank you for the question, Emil. But now we have another question. Yeah, I have a, you hear me? I have a follow-up question to the first one. How do you define pornography? I didn't get it. Can you? How do you define pornography? What's the follow-up? There question? is a definition which is uh, uh, not done by us, but by the um, yeah, by the legal uh, or how to say by the administration. There is like a def definition which um, says pornography is if if you show explicit sexual actings and if it's not art, then it's pornography and th then you can't show it. It's like. 
it's funny and we we put we we uh, we put this uh, pictures uh, afterwards with with this like how to say porn like the pornographic like how to say it is it a banner a banner yeah w which like hi hits or hides, hides. Uh, the uh, the thing in a way and we we put like the text about porn what is pornography uh, uh, un like as a, a short text to inform people why it's it's hidden and uh, we w i also were very amused to read it <laughs> but it's like that it's it's not a decision of of uh, Deutsches Museum in a way because they have to be open for uh, like um, school uh, like uh, students and everything and so it was uh, the, like the discussion was only about uh, we as curators wanted to show what you what you aren't allowed to show this was like the discussion. We want to put it again with the, like this thing, I don't know the, the word, and to tell people why it's there and why you have to, to uh, put it. You understand? And this was a funny discussion, and, but now it's, it's there. And in the next show you will see this yeah, funny, <laughs> funny pornographic, uh, uh, I don't know the word. There is an English word, but I can't remember now. Thank you. One last question. Yes. Uh, hi, my name is Eleanor. Uh, I was wondering, um, the the exhibition at Historisches it was very um, edu educational uh, in a way, and I think the the one at Schulas is not that uh, educating. It's more uh, graphic and more yeah. open for uh, for interpretations. So, what would happen if they switched places? What um. do you think? Yeah, I think the the audience in um, it was okay for us because usually the Schulz Museum also does very educational um, shows, and so we were really happy to be able to show like uh, like big, like uh, uh, how to say high art. Uh, because usually we do not have the money to show it, and so we were really happy to have like a show with big names and so. And and it was like a bit a bit to change the places in a way to put all the stuff we usually show in the Deutsches Historisches and to bring in a, a different perspective in Schulz Museum, which we usually can't uh, can't do. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for good questions and thank you so much, Birgit Busselt. Då ska vi gå vidare till nästa programpunkt. The Anne Street Museum om makt, representation och HBTQI. Den ideella föreningen The Anne Street Museum har engagerat flera svenska museer de senaste åren att jobba med HBTQI-perspektiv och gärna i samarbeten med lokala föreningar i andra länder. Nu ska vi få höra mer om erfarenheterna från det två långa projektet. Anst